Well, let me tell you something, brother. When I'm working on my 24-inch pythons, dude, I'm listening to Let's Find Out with Diego. Train, say your prayers, and listen to Let's Find Out with Diego. Ooh, what you gonna do, brother, when Let's Find Out with Diego runs wild on you? Are you curious about the unknown, the unexplainable? Do you find yourself intrigued by the mysterious and paranormal side of our world? Join us on an adventure into the world of inexplicable discoveries and investigations that may someday give us the final answer as to what may be behind the veil of reality. The borders of space and time have opened once again and transmitting from the mountains of West Virginia. It's time once again for Let's Find Out with Diego. The universe is waiting for you. <laughs> the borders of space and time have opened once again and transmitting from the mountains of West Virginia. It's another episode of Let's Find Out with Diego. Thank you for taking this journey with me on this episode of Let's Find Out. I read a very interesting article earlier this week, and spoiler alert, we have a murder and Bigfoot twist to this story. So I go to my studio and pick up the red phone and found the right people to discuss this article with. One is very well versed on the psychology of the criminal mind, an expert researcher on serial killers and what makes them tick. Our other guest is the historically haunted tour guide, researcher, and host of the historically haunted podcast. Both are very well respected in their field of study. All this plus more. Please welcome to Let's Find Out, my paranormal brothers from another mother, Thomas Patrick Gormley and Adam, the historian ghost hunter. Brothers, the family's back together tonight. Welcome back to Let's Find Out. One hell of a rabbit hole we got going on here, gentlemen. <laughs> oh, we sure do. <laughs> I love that. This guy's introduction is crazy. What is going on, Raph and Thomas, my two brothers? What is up, guys? Hey, you know, you know the the grind, man. We're trying to build something here. I think it's very beautiful, and I know both of you have been very busy, and you guys have a lot of events and projects in the works. Uh, I'll start with you, Adam. You've recently you've changed the format of your podcast, and you also got to spend a little time with Trucker Donnie Green and uh, catch us up on this, man. How did it go? What you been up to, man? Oh, I appreciate that. I know you, you're a big supporter. You and Thomas, man, you guys share. The, you guys are like my booking agents. I'm actually, for those of you who don't know, I'm also the uh, booking head booking agent at Historically Haunted Booking. And Raph and Thomas are both underneath my umbrella. Um, so, so yeah, man, um, Don Donnie's been a sponsor of the show for a couple of years now. I had him as a guest, as everybody knows out there, Donnie Green was the um, Orinco driver, the red truck Orinco driver in the film Pet Cemetery, the one that ran over Gage, singing Sheena was a punk rocker for a little bit. He came down to Maine because he's also my client, and we went to go see the truck, which is also my client, v VL Tamaro, Mike Tamaro, out there, dude. I met him in fucking Bangor, Stephen King country. Actually, no, no, I'm sorry. I met Donnie at Dice Hearts. Dice Hearts is one of the biggest and oldest trucking uh, restaurants. It's like a, 24 hours a day. It's a restaurant trucking thing. Donnie worked there as a gas jockey. He pumped gas and trucks he got his learner's permit there his license and stephen king and mary lambert the director were there having dinner they saw donnie outside they approached him and said you can drive you, go, yeah, you want to be in a movie x amount of money per days and uh you'll drive and this and that so he took the truck around the yard a little bit they said you're hired and the rest is history um so we start off at dice hearts i jumped in with him and uh, we drove fucking almost three hours to Princeton, Maine, Baileyville, Maine. It's literally the river here, and then there's New Brunswick, Canada. You can almost see um, the island there that they used to go digging on. Forget the island there. The Curse, Curse of Oak Island. That's in New Brunswick area. So it's right by that almost, and there's the truck. 666 on one side, 668 on the other. Plaque on the dashboard says used in Pet Cemetery. The grill, everything refurbished, and that'll be going on tour soon, um, along with Donnie. And hopefully we'll be doing a, a lot of different events. So that went out pretty good. That was cool to do that. I get some promo shoots for the uh, for the vodcast, and I'm looking forward to to a couple different events coming up. Speaking at um, fourteen fest, a uh, fortyan fest rather. It's a fest about aliens, Bigfoots type of stuff, and that's in Maine. I'm going to be there with Heather from Witch and Life Guide. We'll have a table, and then I'll be speaking at the uh, Paracon, the Connecticut fest in in uh, in Connecticut with Thomas and Charles Rosene. That's in um, July. Oh, help me out, Thomas. 
20th and 21st. That's right. I get to be a speaker. I was a speaker for them at the Salem Paracon, which I'll be back again this year in Salem. That'll be in October. So pure fucking madness there. Salem in October, look about 60, 70,000 people. And that's no kidding. Um, wow. So I'll be in Connecticut with them speaking. And hopefully Donnie will be in Salem. And then and just like with you, Raf, we, we're a full running machine. And good news is good news is getting better. And we keep building our brands. And uh, it's a trip, man. We're living our dreams to an extent, but we work, put the hard work in. It's not given to us by any means. You know that, dude. So, yeah, man, I appreciate you. I love you guys, man. This is fun. Um, yeah, we love you, too. And what you said is is the grind is real. I mean, we're making it happen with the support of each other. There's nothing we can't accomplish for sure. Uh, Patrick, you, you've been killing them with them short videos on Tuesdays. We're spooky facts. I love them. I, I'm playing for the wife. She loves them, too. Also, big Paracon coming up. Brother, the floor is yours. Um, what have you been doing, man? Oh, you're very busy. Very, very busy. You know, I, I like I told you guys before, I have a normal job and a paranormal job. My normal job is like 50, almost 60 hours a week. And then the rest of the time, uh, I'm helping plan paracons, events, psychic fairs. I'm doing TV shows and it it's nuts. But, you know, first off, I officially was asked to be an official cast member for the TV show Dark Echoes, which is airing on Amazon Prime, Paraflix, and next year, it's not set yet, but it looks like they'll be on Apple TV also. Uh, so that'll be a good, good uh, way to get in there. I agreed to do the show because it's real um, and it's not fake stuff, it's real, whatever happens, unscripted. If nothing happens, it still goes on the air. So it's not anything, you know, it just lets the viewer pick, hey, is this place haunted or not? And the premise is basically a psychic medium goes in and uh, goes in blind and uh, say, hello, here you are. See what you get. And, it, and they do that. And then after the investigators go in to see if they could verify what the medium picked up. Uh, so it, it's, it's been great. I filmed two episodes already. I have a third one coming up. Uh, it'll be the season finale of season one. And then uh, there'll be a hiatus, of course. Uh, but probably some of the biggest things that I do has the Archangel of the Paranormal I've been known for for many years. But I am now the shaman of the Shaman and Showman LLC, which is an events group uh, producing and all. And uh, our next event coming up is the Paracon, which is in Connecticut and Stratford, July 20th and 21st. We have some pretty big names that are going to be there. A lot of them have never done Paracons before, which should be exciting because people always want to see somebody different, see what their take is. So that's going to be exciting for that. Um, you know, and then we also have, after that, we have a big festival coming up um, in Connecticut. The witch trials were in Connecticut 45 years before Salem. And uh, just last year, all those people that were said to be witches were exonerated by the court system here in Connecticut. No so, way. Yeah, so we're having a festival just because of that reason in uh, wow. historic Pratt Street in Hartford. That'll be free to the public. Uh, they could just wander in and, and enjoy that. And then uh, after that, of course, will be the Salem Paracon. We're having it in October for the first time. So it's going to be really busy. And we hope to get a good turnout because we're, we have a, we're planning on having uh, quite the guest list. Uh, I've been busting my butt trying to get some of these people here. Some of, you know, it's a little outrageous sometimes, but I, I think uh, we have some negotiating to do to, to get a good cast uh, of, of people. And I'm pretty excited about that and sprinkle in some psychic uh, fests. We have a big one in Dudley Town uh, Brewery that's coming up. Uh, yeah, that's the weekend after the Paracon. And, uh, you know, we have some other things planned. Uh, Charles and I have a few meetings for some other, events that are going to correspond with some of the paracons that are going to be pretty crazy but uh yeah and doing my uh tuesday morning cereal and wednesday I do my fantastic word origins and then weird spooky facts connecticut um, i'm glad you guys enjoy that you know uh like i told adam before it's like i never know what i'm going to say on these it's like it comes to me it's like i think i'll talk about that and then before i go on i was like well i don't want to wing it so let me just make sure i'm right and then just go and do it i don't really Take a lot of time to research it, but you know, usually it takes me like ten minutes to make sure. So. See, I thought sure shit he had it. I thought for sure shit he had like a regimen. Like, all right, I'm gonna do, 
a piece on the XYZ killer this week or whatever. I thought yep. for sure. Because you have the music and you have the little it's it's pretty yeah. good on TikTok and yeah, I don't plan it out, you know. Um sometimes there's been times where I wake up and I didn't do it the night before, and I'll film like uh, the one this past week in Weird Spooky Facts, Connecticut. I did that in five minutes to get it back out on the air. So, you know, it was like a film. I was like, oh, my God, you know, because I was going to do it the night before. But usually I film everything on my day off on Monday. I just ch- I just videotape and change my shirt to look like it's a different day. <laughs> but with, with that, that well, accurate- yeah. Trick with it warmer out, with it warmer out, I got to start doing yard work again. So <laughs> I don't have all the time, so I'm just doing them the night before. So yeah, fuck it. Eh? It's funny you you mentioned that because back in my old wrestling days when they had the TV tapers for the the local companies, uh, sometimes there were five six hour days, and what I would do is I would have my briefcase full of different wrestling outfits mm-hmm. because some of these episodes play the next month or next week. I just want to look like I'm fresh. Whole different day. Oh, I, yeah. I'd have my zebras on, or I would have my fire ones. So you know, presentation is the key. You know, yeah. with that. So I'll be fully transparent with, with prepping for this one. Um, it kind of came to me because I subscribed, and I don't know if you guys do the same thing. Where I get a lot of newsletters that come into my my box. I like to read up on things currently or what's happened in the past. And sometimes you can sift out some ones or look. Ah, but this one. And I sent you guys the article. It's pretty interesting. Um, the article, and I'll give the, the proper um, credit, came from the Coast to Coast AM, you know, one of my favorite shows ever. And I signed up for their newsletters. And this one came across my desk. And I'll be reading from this one later, later. But this murder story has a bit of an interesting twist, my friends, where we've heard about killers admitting or claiming that they were influenced or directed either by the devil, a demon, or some evil force that convinced them or made them kill or commit murders. Um, one that came up to mind immediately after I read this article was one that happened back in 1974 with the murder of the DeFeo family by the son. I think it was done with a shotgun. And, of course, the Amityville Horror, the, the sequels that came out afterwards. Um, but the premise of that story is the son, I guess, was under the influence of the actual devil where he started um, to murder his family. Um this one a bit different, but a question for the both of you. But Thomas, I'll start with you. Um, can you name or bring up any case or cases that involved such a claim by the person that uh, dark forces allegedly ordering someone to commit murders? Yeah, you know, you know, I go way back. Uh, I started off with the Warrens and a lot of their cases, and I'm actually friendly with the guy that this case was all about, uh, Arnie Johnson. And uh, the devil made me do it, you know, the conjuring and all that. And Arnie's the nicest guy you'll ever meet. And uh, he had an issue back then with with the landlord. And, uh, you know, and he had helped his girlfriend's son with, you know, trying to help him get over possession with the Warrens. And maybe he, he made the mistake of saying, well, take me on, you know, leave this boy alone. And then, you know. Sometimes the, you know, the, the demon waits, you know, for the perfect time. And with his problem with his landlord, uh, you know, you never know. He could have just jumped into him and and he has no memory of killing the guy still to this day. And uh, they just found him out on the road dazed and all that. So, but the thing is, is because of this going to court and saying what they said, he didn't get first degree murder because there was still some doubt. And this demonic supposed possession created that doubt where he was in on manslaughter and got out early. But if you meet the guy, you know, he's the nicest guy you'll ever meet. And, you know, it's you, 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 you're dumbfounded sometimes because is this real? Is this the psychosis psychology of it? Or is there something evil that we don't know about? And, and Adam, you're, from your tours that you've done, you do a lot of the Stephen King tours, and you know an awful lot about the history of the towns. But your knowledge goes way past just the Stephen Kings and the hauntings. But you know a lot of things about also serial killers too, not just in Maine I but can, in other states. Yeah, 
I consider myself the, I call myself the rain man of the paranormal. Ever since my accident, dude, when I died for 38 seconds, back when I got that car accident, I think Thomas remembers that back in 2021, right before Corona. Uh, yeah, they paddled me back to life. Ever since then, man, I can retain shit. I don't, I don't just, I don't, I don't know what it is, man. I, I, it's like, I know wrestling music, like theme music. As soon as the song hits, I know who's coming out for wrestling. I know that for everything else. Not for, for me. <laughs> You know what I mean? My mom always always tell me, oh, if there was a test on the Ultimate Warriors theme music, you get a fucking A plus on that. I go, oh shit. Mm-hmm. And Thomas, real quick, I met Arn Johnson. I actually met his wife Deborah before she passed mm-hmm. away. Yep. Um, that she was that was her brother Preitzel. Uh, was it Preitzel? Um, that was the last name, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it was. Yes. And I actually went to the courthouse that was in in Edmond or Enfield, Connecticut, or something. Um, I forget where now, but I went there with George DeCosta. I went to the Warren Con. So that's a good one, too. And there's a lot of things that come to mind, dude, honestly, especially when it comes to that stuff. Because a couple things. things. Now, here's one thing. I do do tours for, for Maine, but I can give you tours of all Salem. I know where the oldest witch was hung and buried. That's something, too, now. Do you consider that something where these girls claim to be fits of Tatuba, of, 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 of the black witch, of a witch? And they accuse these other girls and guys that got hung. George Burroughs, a reverend, and he got hung because some kids said that he was a witch. Is that the same thing you think they were f- told to kill because of a witch they didn't kill but the courts killed them you know what i'm saying they had them tried and fucking hung 20 men and women um uh, five died in prison and even a dog died in prison of witchcraft and that's no shit you can look it up so i know a lot of that in danvers massachusetts where, where rebecca nurse homestead is uh, 1682 and she was uh, found guilty of the oldest woman hung the oldest person hung and her son cut her off the rope and brought her back and buried her out back in the cemetery i've been there um, but as far as Maine goes, man, there's some crazy shit. There's a couple different things. Um, if you remember the beginning scene of It 2, when the gay kid in the in the film gets thrown off the bridge and Pennywise saves him but kills him, he gets thrown off the bridge. Remember that part? Where they're coming off the little fair and the kids make fun of him, beat him up because he's gay, take his hat, throw him off the bridge, and he goes to drown, but Pennywise saves him but kills him. There was a gay kid thrown off a bridge in Bangor for that reason. You can look that up in Bangor's Dairy, right? And that was inspired that. So there's that. I mean, there's crazy things. But when it comes to my mind that I remember growing up in Auburn, Maine, A-U-B-U-R-N, right next to Lewiston, um, I grew up and there was an apartment building, right? And it's still fucking there. And every time I go by, I get to Willie's. I'm not in my Auburn anymore. But um, on the second floor, there was an oven. And this dude put this 13-month-old baby in the oven and put it on high and cooked it to death while the mother waited because he was an LSD head, took acid, I guess. But he was told the devil that the baby was the devil, and he literally cooked this fucking baby to death. And he he got matches thrown on him in prison. He's still in Maine serving a life sentence, but they had to change him and change his name because people keep trying to set him on fire because of it. The apartment's still there. I forget the name, but if you look up "child put in oven" in Auburn, Maine, the uh, the apartment building's still there. I don't mean to laugh; it's just very messed up. And they he he literally cooked the kid to death, and he was told that that God told him to do it because this kid was Satan. You don't hear about that. It's not a big one, but that happened. And I live right across the street. So that's what I'm a product of growing up at three, four years old, finding that out. You know what I mean? I knew that that was my bus stop. And then I we moved to Lisbon when I'm six years old. My mom, we watched The Shining and I'm eight. My mom goes, you're going to the same school this guy went to. Stephen King went to the same high school. So then you start reading up on things. And there's a lot of eerie stuff in Maine. A lot of people go missing, hunters, a lot of weird ritualistic things, a lot of satanic stuff. H.H. H. Holmes, um, Herman Webster Mudgett. He was born and raised in Gilmington, New Hampshire, right next to me. I've been to his house. The school across the street he went to, Gilmington Academy, where the, they had a skeleton in the in the closet in the science lab, and they pushed him in there and freaked him out. And they think that's what sparked him to be a killer or whatever. That's still there. I've been to his house. I got a brick from the foundation. I got a piece of uh, sage on it in my room. The girl goes, you're not going to do any satanic rituals with it, are you? I go, no, I'm just a big fan. She goes, of a killer? She owned the house. She gave me, let me see the house. I got pictures. 1845 house in Gilmington, New Hampshire. Look that up. I know Thomas says he's not America's first serial killer, but he's the first documented one, supposedly. Mm-hmm. But he was told that he did it because of spirits as well. He had, what, four or five wives, different shit. So why do these people do these things? Why do these killers do that? And I think, why are we fascinated with it? Because it's so weird. It's so different. And like this dude putting a baby in the oven, I can never imagine ever doing that or even living with myself. But he's alive that I know of. He's in prison. Um so the Sasquatch killer guy, the devil made me do it guy, is it, are they crazy? Are they on drugs? Do they really believe it themselves? Is it fucking real? Or are they just, is it just plain murder? We're still trying to figure that out, I think. 
And it's very interesting you bring that up because I know Thomas, you touched on this earlier, but let me bring something that I remember back in the it was early nineties, and there was this kid out of Florida who murdered his family, and I think I I want to say his name was Sean Sellers, and correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure I am. Somebody out there in the internet will find something where <laughs> he was involved with back then Dungeons and Dragons, and I think that was a big um issues back then because it, it was like i would say like the gateway drug to um uh, occultism or something so I, I the long short of it is that as he started playing dungeons and dragons he either got involved with the occult or something happened to him where i guess he was motivated to kill his family now he w- obviously was sent to prison I, I knew this girl back then i used to go to church with and she started ch- exchanging letters with him and never a good idea i think in, this is my, in my opinion but i so as the story goes, he did convert to Christianity, and then he wrote a book into, like, a warning to parents. And people say, hey, don't get involved with X amount of things because, um, you know, you might get uh, a bad return on it if they're involved in these occultic practices and things like that. So eventually, I believe he, he was executed in, in Florida. Uh, I don't know if it was early 2000s or late 90s, but the question is, I swear I'm going to get to the article. <laughs> and build up <laughs> yeah there's something that happens in somebody's mind and i don't know it could be from a trauma if they're involved in certain things to where they think they're receiving messages where they're motivated enough I'm talking about some fucked up shit with somebody putting a baby in the oven you know that's straight bullet to the head to that guy but that's that kind of justice doesn't exist here right now um what happens here because if let's separate the human aspect of it. What is it that opens up someone's brain, whatever force it is that causes to motivate somebody to do these actions? I could probably take that one. So just with my background, psychology, dealing with these type of inmates for all the years that I did, and just looking at historic serial killers, a lot of it stems, it, it could be anybody. All of us go through trauma. We all go through trauma. Um, You know, there's some of the trauma leads to drug addictions and all that because you're trying to mask the trauma. It always comes back to some type of trauma that could rewire the mind. You rewire the mind because somebody could become schizophrenic, but there's a lot that leads up to it. Yeah, it could be genetic, but sometimes with drug abuse, um, traumas, anything like that could lead to that schizophrenia. But a lot of people don't know is there's different stages of it. There could be early onset, which is usually in your late teens. So it's usually between that, you know, for men, it's like mid 20s, women, it's early 20s. But there is like LOS, late onset schizophrenia, which could happen between the ages of 40 and 60, where people start hearing voices and all that. It's like unhealed trauma. But later on in life, some other trauma can happen to loosen that and create the mind to rewire and then have that type of psychosis. So that's like the science side of it. Those are proven types of things when people with psychologists are able to find out that that's the way they are. But then of course, we'll be talking in a little, a bit about the paranormal side of it with the case that you're talking about. And hopefully, you know, all your listeners are going to hear this, but you know, Adam knows I'm one of those people that, I like to make people think and I like to mess with people's minds and make them think in a good way, in a good way. It's, it's I always want people to dive disclaimer. In. Yeah. Well, I want them to dive down the rabbit hole. I don't want them to take everything we say as true. I want them to read stuff. You know, we're all online well, we're all the time. Yeah. yeah. Read stuff, get into it a little bit more, find out, you know, why do these things happen that we're talking about? You know, um, I'm an educator. I like to educate people and see, especially for a serial killer, what they do and what to look out for, especially for parents when their kids are growing up, what to look out for to get them that help. And we've talked about it before at Adam's show that you could overparent and you could underparent. So sometimes you're looking for that goal. Of None of us are perfect. You just have to be there for our kids and recognize these things and help them before it gets out of control and these types of things happen where they think they're hearing voices, they think they see this and all that. So it, 
it could be curbed, um, but sometimes uh, uh, you never know. So, yeah. Well said. I think just like the paranormal field, or even the regular field in life, instead of going against each other and judging each other, let's work together and learn from each other's mistakes and go, all right, mm -hmm. let's help each other as a community. Real yep. quick, I found it. Look. What you find? It at home. It's the thing about that dude. You put her in the hot oven. Look at that. Oh, no, <laughs> Dude, this is him now. He's, he's tall. A life. John yeah. Lane, starting yeah. a life sentence real quick. He's in Bangor. He's in my neck of the woods. He's in Derry, Maine by King. A former Auburn man serving a life sentence in Maine, one of the most notorious trials ever. 66 years old, now convicted of killing four-year-old Angela Palmer, October 27th, 1984, by cooking her to death in a hot oven. That's terrible. A four-year-old. And that's what Thomas says. I think it's not that we're infatuated. We need to find these people out so we can stay away from them and learn and see the yeah. sign. When people yeah. torture little animals and kids, it's one thing to like maybe shoot a BB gun and kill a squirrel, but to like, you know, get a rabbit or a squirrel or a cat and pull off its ears and legs, that's not normal. And that's the serial killer in the working. You know what I mean? Yeah. You gotta look for these signs, man. And, well, and that's where you have to get that's where you have to get involved with with yes. people at a younger age before that becomes that trauma. But a lot of these kids go through these traumas, you know, and I don't want to get too deep into it, but you know, the the abuse that some of them take, uh whether yeah. I don't want to say, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Either way you look at it, you know, and alcoholic parents, drug addicted parents, abusive parents. Yeah. Parents. Yeah. They're going up, you know, you know, and the terrible thing is the uncle comes over that kind of thing. And, you know, but I don't want to get into that, but you know what I'm talking about? And sometimes that's hidden and they never talk about it. And it becomes a trauma where you put it aside and it just sits there dormant waiting for something to open it back up in certain situations, there's so many people out there that have these traumas and it just takes a reminder to make them go off the deep end. Yeah. And then how, and then how do they defend themselves? Oh, the devil made me do it. That's the <laughs> devil to them was the trauma. You know, we manifest the traumas. Problem. And I, I've talked to Raph about this before and he talked about it where, you know, trauma manifests as, as anything. The, 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 the devil of drugs, the devil of, this, you know, this trauma, the devil of that trauma, you know, we manifest this stuff and but we Tom, try and make sense of it. We make sense of it by saying it's the devil or it's this well, in that situation sometimes, but it I can go the other way too. I guess something you may know, is, is it true that, I mean, to me, it seems like nine out of 10 serial killers on trial, they go, well, he had a rough life. His father abused him or, well, his mom used to hit. You always hear that. It's yeah. almost not an excuse, but it's, they almost, they, none of them really take full credit. And this is like fucking Ramirez or something. And they get them. But even he had the Satan print in his hand, right? Mm -hmm. the guy, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So really, they're all like, well, he had an abusive childhood. And so a lot of people say that shit, I think. Even whether it's the devil or like you say, the devil in something else. My mom yeah. was the devil. My uncle was the devil. Yeah. Uncle John Morris used to touch Lizzie Borden. So she took an yeah. axe to her parents. Yeah. <laughs> well, some say that her Lizzie Borden's father was... Doing he, stuff to her and his sister and all that. And so. the maid even. Yeah, Bridget, yeah. he was banging the maid. I stayed there with Heather all night one night in 2019. The yeah. girl goes, uh, what's her name that passed away? She goes, the other couple died, uh, uh, canceled, so you're alone. Hundred what, 230 yeah. bucks for the whole house when usually you're going to pay 1500 bucks. Yeah. It was in the house in Fall River. It's crazy. <sighs> and you remember, I, I never been naked that night, boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A few, a few, there'll be a few spirits looking at you. <laughs> I'll take it. Whatever I, I get some good evidence. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> no, and this a lot of this is very interesting because now we're to come to the part of the show where we're gonna talk about the article. Something similar in a sense where somebody blames somebody else for something and not taking accountability for their actions. But I hate reading articles, but I'm gonna take a stab at it. I'm not reading Shakespeare, but I'm gonna do my best here. <laughs> And um, hey, congrats on the sponsorship, too, man. The radio oh, station loves you, you know. Snarly Yow, you hey, we had a little live event. I want to give you some props. You're not one to gloat, but yeah, I tell you, man, you're you're definitely growing your brand. It's an honor to be on the show again, man. I appreciate oh, you asking. Thank, me. thank you. And even you know, Gene Tewksbury, man, doing an amazing job, and I he sponsors her. some of the episodes too. So, and I love her to death, and I know you guys do too. Dustin yeah. Grammer loves your hats, people yeah. are loving your stuff. Good, yeah. good stuff, good people. No, that's why they're all part of the family, man. We can't bring in bums, man. We got to bring in good people, man. Yeah. Which reminds me, um, Thomas sponsors my show this week on the vodcast. Um, yeah, I'm going to have my guest on there. It's going to be Kara Phillip. 
and Paige Dalton. They're from Obs- Into the Obscure podcast. A couple nice. of cool chicks. Good, good guess. Thomas is sponsoring it. And then next week, Dustin Grammer is sponsoring it. Moonlight uh, Monster Media will be a sponsor. Um, and I'm not sure what my guest is quite next week. I forget. Oh, uh, Wade Kirby from Nesper. He oh, Wade. Hey. Wade Kirby's my guest. So, yeah. So, yeah, he's, uh, he's speaking of Dustin, we, we text each other almost every day. And the things that man's got planned, it's going to blow your mind, brother. Just wait. I love it. Oh, I'm telling you, man, it's the people I'm surrounding. You guys are up and up. Thomas, when we first met, you know, now he's a shaman, the showman, doing conventions, rafts, streaming everywhere, doing all this stuff. Oh, man. Danny's writing books about Stephen King <laughs> and vampire yeah. kids. Danny <laughs> Perez. Love you, Danny. Um, so good people. Um, I surround myself with good people, and that's good. And, and it is good people. And it's interesting because we're all very different in a lot of things in our beliefs, probably different faiths or whatever, but we don't really take account to any of that, but we all inspire each other. So that's the yeah. beauty of this whole thing and uh, ever forward, right? You know, that's what we're going to do. You're yeah. fucking Raph and his Hulk Hogan impersonator friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Raph. It, you surround yourself with good people. And I've talked about this before, you know, even if you're the quarterback, you're the player, we're all on a team together. We're all trying to win. And we're trying to get people to educate about paranormal, anything along that nature. And when you're surrounded with a good group, you make each other better. And that's the most important part. We all have to make each other better. We all have to root for each other. And uh, I'm always excited to see all you guys improving. And yeah, it's been like, I think Adam, I think it's been like over a year now that just over a year now since we first talked and just a lot of stuff has come a long way uh, in over a year. So Fucking I, I come off Mohegan Sun elevator. There's Thomas. Let's go to the bar and get a drink on me. <laughs> right. in Mohegan Sun going to the yeah. Warren convention and the rest is history. Yeah. And of course, Raph, I haven't met you yet, but you said, you know, Jeb my way, uh, author J.E. Shook. Of course, Dustin, you were, you sent me clients. I've sent you sponsors, Gene guests. Yeah. So I think, yeah, we're all building as a brand. No one's sitting back expected to be done. We're go-getters. For yeah. you listening, let's find out podcast is is going places. Check it out. And I thank you for listening. And uh, let's go. Let's, let's talk about yeah. this crazy incident, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're going to do it. So picture this. The year is 2022. We're in Oklahoma. The article reads somewhat like this. Forgive me if I mess it up, but I'm going to. But I, I don't plan to. <laughs> I don't plan to. An Oklahoma man who killed his fishing buddy out of fear that he was about to be sacrificed to Sasquatch was found guilty of first-degree murder in a rather speedy trial that featured something of a surprising twist. The alleged killer, Larry Sanders, that's already funny already, Larry yeah. Sanders accused of killing Jimmy Knighton during a July of 2022 fishing trip wherein he had come to believe that the victim has summoned Bigfoot to eat him. In a surprising development, to start of the trial on, on that Tuesday, his attorney reportedly pivoted from the expected argument that Sanders was guilty by reason of insanity. Instead, he poised that the fisherman was actually innocent because he acted in self-defense. Second part to this story. Taking the stand that Wednesday, Sanders declared that his fishing buddy Knighton attacked me, and as such, I acted out of survival mode. Larry Sanders stuck to his Sasquatch story during the testimony saying that he spotted three of the sizable cryptids along the river at the time of the incident. And the only thing that made sense was that he was about to be sacrificed to the creatures by his friend. This account was echoed by an agent of the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation who testified that Sanders told him that he strangled Knighton to death and then raised his hands in victory before shouting to the Sasquatch watching. Weak is evil! Weak is evil. It's like, get the baby, right? So weak as evil. Now, Sanders didn't want a trial by jury. The judge did find Sanders guilty of first degree murder. Okay, so I know that (laughs) there's a lot to unpack here in this very short article that I did not write and uh, (laughs) came from Coast to Coast AM. I love you guys. Now, first thing I think about is what the hell, because even by crazy standards, the motive is crazy. Uh, I love to unpack here. Who wants to take this one on first? I'll I'll, oh, I'll definitely it. take it on. Yeah, I I got right. you covered on this one. Let's let's look at it two different ways. You know, let's look on the psychology side of it. The article doesn't tell us enough about okay, what did they find with this guy when they interviewed him? What are the other things? 
was there a disagreement of some sort beforehand before they went on this fishing trip or anything like that? Was was this guy cheating on his wife with him or something? Or we, we don't know any of that stuff that could lead to those types of things. But again, I talked about earlier late onset schizophrenia. You know, that sounds like a schizophrenic thing. Or, okay, this, these monsters are going to eat me, and this is the guy, and he pinpointed it on his friend there. Um, and, you know, that's the psychology side of it. But if you want to look on the paranormal side of it, we look at Bigfoot as interdimensional. Um, they give off what they call infrasound and all that, these sounds. And I know we've talked about this before, that some of these interdimensionals or aliens or anything like that have been known maybe to create mind control because yeah. again, us as humans, we only use about 10% of our conscious mind. Who's to say that these people have been around a lot longer than us and are able to use a lot more of their mind where they could control us and for a game, watch me make this guy kill this guy, you know, kind of thing with these Bigfoots. Yeah. But then again, I'm thinking, if I were like killing somebody, there's three Bigfoots, and I, man, I'd be taking pictures. This is how many times has somebody seen three Bigfoots at once? How many? Nobody ever talks. I, they only ever see one. Barely. I've never heard of more than two. No. So I that's what. Really. Yeah. Well, that's what makes me not believe what this guy's talking about. So why use the number three? Three is always in biblical sense. You know, it could be looked at two different ways. You know, it could be the mocking. It could be. You know, those things. It's like, why do people in psychosis use three? They want to, yeah, yeah, well, you're trying to move in that demonic thing like we talked about again. The devil made me do it. He's using three Sasquatch in his story to say this is why he did it. So, you know, there's so much correlation there paranormal-wise. But the psychosis, too, did this guy have some underlying problem? Were they drinking? Were they taking drugs? We don't know, according to the article. But that's how you have to look at it on both sides. It could be paranormal. It could be normal human psychosis that creates this. And using that story and how it intertwines and the the three Bigfoot, seeing three Bigfoots is the one that got me and how that number three and what we do for, you know, in the paranormal and how that corresponds religiously and whatever you want to think of. It, it's just crazy. Just a crazy thing. No. Never heard no. of a gang of Bigfoots before. That's a first. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, or it could be a premeditated murder with a bullshit story that he says, well, maybe if anything, I'll plead insanity with a bullshit story, yeah. which is predetermined too. So who fucking, because like you said, what's the background of their previous text? Were they, did they get in an argument? Were they known to not get along? Were they druggies? Was he a drunk? Was he yeah. fucking crazy? Was he off his medicine? You know, yeah. was this dude banging his girlfriend and he wanted to go, I, you, we don't know that. Yeah. The story doesn't go deep. Yeah. But it's the hard. Bigfoot Sasquatch or Bigfoot and say there's that you that that's pretty wild, but you gotta admit, man, that's definitely up there for a crazy story, huh? <laughs> it is what because area was this rap? What town, what city was this in? This and that's the thing, the article's very vague murder. on the details where as far as that because I don't even know if what river or lake this happened on. But my question Kentucky, is right? Oklahoma. And oh, shit. same thing. Well, I mean, it it could happen in Kentucky. They have a lot of sightings there of Sasquatch and Bigfoot anyway. Same thing mm-hmm. in Michigan. Um, strangling somebody to death takes an awful lot of strength. Now, mm-hmm. my thing is he may have caught his buddy by surprise where he didn't have time to defend himself. I'm thinking if they're on a boat and if somebody's strangling him, I think wouldn't they have, if there was a struggle, wouldn't have capsized, fell in that the water? Too. Rock the boat. Don't rock the boat, baby. Oh, yeah, yeah, that would have been gone. Yeah, let me, let me tell you something. Um, Back in the day, when I first got out of college, I, I worked on an ambulance. And um, some people, they take certain drugs and they have superhuman strength. That's true, too. And, you know, it, it comes to the point where I, I think these guys are out on a fishing trip having a lot more than fish, is what I'm kind of guessing. And sometimes certain drugs will do these things where you'll hear voices and you hallucinate and you think you see a Bigfoot and you think it's telling him, oh, he's going to kill you. You know, I don't know. Did they test this guy after they arrested him? How long was it until after they arrested him? There are so many like holes and all that. If I had the whole case history, I could really do a good profile on why this guy did what he did. But we're speculating right now. 
and it could go either way, you know, and I think that's just yeah. great for the audience. What does the audience think? And let's dive into this even more because uh, I guess this guy's been convicted. They haven't given him his sentence yet. So I, I think. Wow. This, this this, right. Yeah. So that's. For all you know, he's on acid or hallucinogenic or even a strong drug to where he saw a family of bears. But it looked heightened because of his drug. Yeah. Maybe there are three bears standing up. He goes, fucking Bigfoot. Because yeah. bears can be 12 feet tall when they stand up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, yeah, the guy, said, like well, the guy said 12, 12 feet. I don't think anybody's ever seen a Bigfoot 12 feet tall. I think they usually describe it as about eight feet at the most. Oh, that's true. But if it's a smaller bear, I mean, I don't know. It could be. I mean. Who's the heck to know that they were 12 foot tall aliens that made himself look like a Bigfoot? Hey, you know, that's so crazy. You know, I, I think it'll just mess with everybody's mind right now. But I've heard what he's saying. Thing. You know what's I funny, too? I've heard that the Bigfoots are the former us, like Neanderthals. That's why they're hairy. And yeah. aliens are the future us. That's why they're hairless. I've yeah. heard of that theory, too. Yeah, there's so many different theories. But I really think the way, this, the way this comes out is, you know, a lot of these guys, when they go together on a fishing trip, you know, they're hunting turkeys. They're more hunting wild. They're having more wild turkey than hunting turkeys. So, you know, you don't know what these guys are. <laughs> like taken just to get away and, and, and relax. And that's their type of relaxing. But some get drunk and someone says yeah. the wrong thing. Next thing you know, them are fighting words. Oh, yeah. Then they're yeah. choking each other out by the campfire. Exactly. You know, you don't know what their relationship was going into it. Sometimes, you know, th that could happen. Um, you know, and that's what I think really it is. It, it could be a combination of both. We don't know until we know the full, story if i were able to like i said if i were able to see the case file which back in the day i used to get a lot of case files on the inmates that i had to profile oh, and that's figure cool. out what was going on it's a lot of data it, it again i like i say it's kind of boring to read all that but really you really get into somebody's mind and you can really figure out why they did what they did you take you know like serial killers they all fit patterns but they all have fingerprints and sometimes when you get that case file it's always afterwards they have the you know the pattern but when you catch them then you get the fingerprint and you still try to put that together it's very hard to do because you never know what the break was in their mind what trauma created that break and in this case with the bigfoot what break happened to him to choke his friend out and to make make up or a reality have seen three bigfoots you fucking imagine though raf Imagine there's three Bigfoots out there just chilling, walking through the woods, going, look at this fucking guy choking his buddy out. He's going to blame us. Watch. Nah, keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, this is why we hide. This is why we hide. You know? This is why we hide, you human pieces of yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah. This well, is why we hide, man. Humans are freaky. Well, let me let me turn this sideways real quick. And let's just say this is <laughs> true, right? And wow, Larry wow. Sanders. Yeah. Here he is. Um, that's the first thing I thought about. It's like, oh, they have to be Larry. One of my favorite shows. I love that yeah. Gary Shandling was a hoot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. Let's I say went to fried chicken, but it's because I got the munchies. <laughs> I went to <laughs> Colonel Sanders. Oh yeah. <laughs> so don't even get me started. I ask, I ask, um, I'm really hungry right now. now that might be a childhood that. KFC. Biting that chicken yeah. reminds me when I was 15. That eating chicken from there tastes the yeah. same stuff. You know? You agree? Oh yeah. I, I, I see churches. I predate you. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> So let's just say this is really why it happened. And they're out fishing, and the buddy who got strangled said, I'm going to feed this guy to the Sasquatches for some reason. Let's just say this is true, and it's happening. There's been talk, and I've read, listened to stories and read articles where Sasquatches, Bigfoot, do have some sort of telepathic communication with people mm -hmm. that maybe I've never heard of a case of them saying, Hey, hey, kill your buddy. You know, he's sleeping with your wife or kill your buddy because he's plans on feeding you to us. But there has been cases where people have reported they've had these uh, these telepathic conversations with Bigfoot and they kind of come out kind of kind of a little bit feeling terrible, like physically or mentally from it. Drain Possible. It. Um, I don't know. I'm throwing this out there. So um, what do you all think? Well, I think I think it's definitely possible. We've talked about it before. People have come across seeing Bigfoots and, you know, they, they put their gun up and they just can't shoot. There's infrasound that they supposedly claim that these things have mind control over us and they could stop us from doing what we want to do. 
or pulling a camera out and taking a good picture when it's able to see us. You know, I know there's some footage and all that, but really it's never really good footage. I wonder if they're able to mess with the cameras too to make it blurry like that and try and pull in. We don't know what these things could do. You know, it's like aliens. We don't know. They probably have so much more time and use much more brain power than we do. We probably have that brain power, but I think they look at us like primitive, you know, and they're able to control us and do whatever they want to do. They, you know, it's like young kids are playing a video game. Hey, well, watch me shoot this guy. Who's to say that these Sasquatches aren't having fun? Hey, watch me watch this guy kill this other guy. Let, watch me do this. Like they're showing off to each other and all that. You know, hey, there could be jerk Sasquatches. It's like human people are jerks to each other. Same thing with aliens could be jerk. We, we don't know. Right. It's the same thing, you know. Hey, there could be a serial killer Sasquatch that uses mind control to make people kill each other. So we yeah. don't know crazy as it is but that's a great fucking theory I'll, and i'm open to it you know what's funny i've i've oh, i was going somewhere that i totally spaced it <laughs> give me a second <laughs> um i was gonna say um i, I think of harry and the hendersons because you see a bigfoot in that movie and he's all lovey-dovey and he's doing the spin wheel and he loves the family but like you say there's good and bad in everything every animal there's fucking there's little cats that'll come right up and rub your leg there's other cats that'll bite your arm <laughs> so it depends it's, you know what i mean there's good and bad a great question, by the way, Raph. Um, I tell you, Diego, man, your podcast is awesome. You're such a good host. You fucking you know your shit. Um, I think Thomas answered that perfectly. It's just, it's so bizarre. The whole topic's so bizarre because you get a serial killer mixed in with a Bigfoot sighting. So you get two different worlds that are just colliding. And it's like, what the actual heck is going on? So this is current? This happened like months ago? A month ago? This, this actually happened back in 2022. Okay, and you know, now. yeah, yeah. Who knows okay. what the outcome has been? But the article was just sent to me a couple of days ago. And You'll get life, I think. I mean, you I, can't. I, I would, yeah. There's no proof of Bigfoot. You can't. He's not gonna show up and go. Yeah, I made him do it. He knows what are you gonna do? You don't have a picture. You don't have a fucking footprint. Nothing, right? I wouldn't think. We don't know. I guess. Well, that's the thing I want to know. Is like I said, yeah. what's the case file? If they said there was three Bigfoots at a certain spot. Did they, did they send the wildlife people out to see if there was actually measurable footprints there? Um, you got to look for evidence. You know, if this guy's saying there's three Sasquatches and you never took the time to go out and look at the fingerprint, the, the footprints, then that creates doubt. So why did this guy get convicted? I know yeah. he didn't have a jury, but if I were on a jury and you never went out to measure and you never went to get the evidence, even though it's crazy, there's still the doubt. So that's the whole thing as a jury. If there's doubt, you can't convict somebody. So and that, that's right. that's the thing is I'm not trying to get this guy off right now, just so you know. But the thing is, is that that's well, what it, it is. So it's like, yeah, like Diego said earlier, you don't even have a picture. You don't have a cell phone video. You got nothing in no. the time and age you couldn't record. Doesn't matter if you have Wi-Fi, you can still yeah. fucking record. So nah, I go you, think of the, you think of the thing is, is if the guy was like, this guy's going to kill me. He sees three sky. He kills his friend, and the Sasquatches are still there. Why don't you videotape it as evidence for yourself if you really felt something. bad that something made you do something? But that's what I think of. I with anything in the heat of the moment, you don't think of that stuff, you know. But still, us has Monday night court or Monday quarterbacks and all that looking to to pick it apart. But really, in the heat of the moment or anything, yeah, it, you never know what's going to happen. Being law enforcement. If I have to pull my weapon and all that, it, it That's true. yeah, you look at it, you, you got to be trained. These guys, this guy's not trained. You know, he doesn't know how he's going to react and all that. But, you know, no. for me, that's, that's trained. And it, like the training that we go through, it's still, you still get screwed up. You know, I've had to pull a shotgun out and cock it on somebody and all that. And it, it's scary, you know, and it, your mind just goes away from you. It's almost like you black out. It's like you're trying to make a decision to do something. Yeah. And this guy made a decision to choke his friend to death because he thought Jesus that he was going to get eaten by three Ooh. Bigfoots. You know, what is going through his mind? At the time? You know, well, that's going to be a first of its yeah. kind. As far as uh, it's going to be a first of its kind. <laughs> I've never heard of a story like that. And that's the first time I ever heard of a Bigfoot related murder story. Yeah. Normally, like we, we gotta go back, you know, to paranormal stuff, you know, a devil, 
you know, a um, a spirit, whatever tells me go do this. I understand that. Um, as you guys were talking, one thing that came to mind, if let's say this is the course that we're going with the store, if the fishing buddy, they're already in the boat. And I don't even know if they were really in the boat. They could have been walking along, along the river because they never say boat. So I'm assuming that the buddy already brought him into the woods. There's three big foot waiting there. The package has been delivered. They could have just killed him at any time. Yeah. But the Bigfoot didn't close the deal. Oh, sat there and just watched him strangle his buddy and have a nice day. And then I have the other theory that we always see these Bigfoot, but nobody's ever able to capture them. Sometimes we see them on film, just like ghosts. They're supposedly interdimensional, but I still think, and I have a friend of mine that had this theory before, and it makes sense. Who's to say that Bigfoot just isn't a ghost of a Cro-Magnon man like we talked about? And it's just something that we see, and, and, and it just goes away, and, and, and it creates that that moment for those people to think that, that something's actually there, and it's not. And, uh, yeah, it, I, I tell you, paranormal, the normal world we think is normal really isn't. Everything in this world is paranormal. You just waking up every day is paranormal. You know, it's like, wow. how, did I, yeah, how did I, how did I get through the dream world? I woke up six feet above ground and all that. That's, the REM sleep. Yeah. <laughs> we still don't know, you know, our life and all that. What is it all about? Are we just here for aliens and Bigfoot and interventionals to play games with us, to get us to do these things, to talk in our brains, the aliens to give us like, okay, a serial killer is getting messages from an alien to go kill people but he doesn't understand it, you know, and then it just becomes a psychosis that we talk about schizophrenia and stuff like that. Who's to say that interdimensional things aren't making us do these things on the paranormal side, but we try and normalize it by saying this is a psychiatric um, problem. This is a trauma. This is this, you know, we don't know. We only use, it's almost like they're playing games with us. Like we're little pawns in a game that they like to play. So it, yeah, I don't want to be like negative that way, but those are the things I think of because you know me, I'm, I'm a rabbit hole guy. I'll go down and I'll ask all these different questions to get people to think, why is this really going on? Are we really here or are we just a game for other people? So that these aliens, these Bigfoots, these whatever interdimensional spirits and when people pass away, who's to say that ghosts are into a different dimension that could play with us also? We don't know. So, yeah. Shaman and the yeah. Showman, Thomas Patrick Gormley, a.k.a. the Archangel of the Paranormal, guys. You guys can see him all doing conventions. You can check him out on TikTok, Facebook, man, YouTube. He's part of the fan, just like Diego. Let's find out podcasts. Fucking things are big things are happening. You drop the co-host, you're just the host. That's what he is, man. <laughs> host with the most. Yeah. Yeah, that's push a, push that's push a long story. Day, editing by night. <laughs> How come that? Is it, yeah. is it me, or I just feel like I, I know it's Saturday. Right, yeah. It's like we're it's like we're just hanging out and, and talking, and people are listening into our conversation. This is like I had a lot of fun doing this. It's like I've told you guys before. I used to do this thing once a year up in New Hampshire, and a bunch of paranormal people would gather. Oh, we'd be at the the about Washington Hotel, just hanging out oh by the God, fire, China, and, and it's just a bunch of us talking about weird stuff like we're doing right now. This would be a topic we would talk about by the fire. Like, why is this happening? And you have all these different, you know, like your point of view, Rav, Adam's point of view, my point of view, all from different areas and different expertise or whether you want to look at it or experiences. And I just remember that, you know, I'm not a name dropper. I don't like to drop names, but probably one of the biggest weirdos that always gets me to think, do you guys know John Tenney? That sounds familiar. John Tenney. Is amazing. Look him up, John E. L. Tenney. He gives a lot of speeches, and this is where a lot of I've learned a lot from him. And we would just sit by the fire till like five in the morning, just talking about the weirdest stuff. And I know this topic would really interest him and all that. And it's just I'm looking back on this stuff, but just to show you, you know, whether I read stuff, but some people, my peers, like you guys, I learn from you guys, and I'm able to come up with 
you know, more knowledge and just help other people also just by learning from everybody else. And that's where it kind of stems from. And this is what it feels like. Well, look you know, what we do, we're just man. There. Yeah. Yeah. Look, we're helping you, each other. You, you spooky facts, Connecticut. You're yeah. bringing up things like the bullfrog massacre that I read about yeah. in books and melon yeah. heads and every, and fucking the hat town, the mad hatters. And I'm dropping stuff from Maine. Raph's yeah. dropping stuff from fucking Virginia. I mean, and, and, and that's just a start. And then you got people all over. Nate's doing New Hampshire. So I think that's cool. Bring it to light yeah. shit. Share the yeah. Conjuring House. Share the Warrens. All that shit's yeah. well and good. But as you know, Tom, uh, uh, Diego, there are thousands of oddities and weirdos yeah. and serial killer locations. There's more than just Jeffrey Dahmer guys. Yeah. There's thousands of these fucking nuts. Oh, yeah, and, dude, Aleister Crowley's got a retreat in New Hampshire. I got to get to. Also, the birthplace of Son of Sam. Son, yeah. of, no, Son of Sam. Sorry, that's a serial killer. Um, Uncle Sam. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Sam is in New Hampshire. Yeah. <laughs> that's probably Sam. the same. Did you guys know? I want to <laughs> tell you one thing. Did you guys know? <laughs> Just talking about serial killers really quick. And this yeah. is the one that really gets me. High ranking politicians have a good way of being able to hide stuff and get stuff off of them. They unearth a whole bunch of bones of dead people in Benjamin Franklin's old home. No. They considered that he might have been a serial killer and all that killed a lot of these people. What? The, the claim is, is there was somebody that lived there with him that was in the medical field and practiced like illegally because back then you couldn't like get human cadavers to work on so i think they like stole them from you know like grave digging and all that but ben franklin was involved in it but i think it to me it just doesn't sound right i, I think you know a famous person like that you don't want to take away from history but damn you know you, you have that big name and those things that happen like that oh diego we get a part two we can go another yeah. hour we got a part two. I was I was going to talk about that because I know and I know we're coming up on the clock, but wasn't it back in the 1800s where these medical institutions of science or whatever they were at the time they used to hire people to rob graves and then bring them so yeah. they could perform these um Grave experiments? Robbing, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that H. was H. a thing. Yeah. He sold things to medical labs. That's how we started out was a grave robber. But then he just started thinking, might as well get them fresh. <laughs> like so this is perfect that I want to tell you guys. Wow. Because remember. At, on Wednesdays, I do the word origins, right? Yes. So just the topic we're talking about, skeletons in the closet. Oh, of course. So in Europe, they don't call it a closet. They call it, you know, what do they call it? Uh, I forget what they call it over in Europe. It's something different. But let's just say skeletons in the closet. So back in the day when they were robbing graves, but when people would come to see these medical things happen, they took those skeletons or the cadavers and hid them in the closet. So nobody knew they were there. So they couldn't get in trouble for, you know, grave robbing. It wasn't until years later that it became legal for people to donate the bodies to science. But before that, the only way you could get bodies were people that were put to death in the medical field, you know, like in, in prisons, if they were on the death penalty, yeah, the criminals, they got them, but there wasn't enough. They were trying to do this stuff. So they, Paid people to rob graves so they could have stuff to work on. How and ironic when, is that? Look at the irony people, there. Yeah, but when people would come to see these medical procedures type of things shown, they had to hide all that stuff in the closet. So that's where skeletons what? in the closet comes from. Wow. Mm -hmm. Fucking leave it to you, Tom. <laughs> that's, why I love, that's why I love talking to you guys, man. You guys, yeah. we found out. See? Yeah. We found oh, out yes. with Diego. We found out. I love that. Yeah, this awesome. is a good blast, man. Real quick, that's how H.H. H. Holmes, he got pushed in the closet at Gilmington Academy by the school. Yeah. And they yeah. locked him in the and there closet. Was a, the and there was a skeleton in there, right? Isn't that crazy? And I think that's what kickstarted his whole... Because I yeah. guess they said he screamed for a minute, and then he just kind of was quiet, and they opened the door. He was, like, touching yeah. the skeleton and shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that awesome. guy went through a lot of trauma. You know, look in the history of H.H. H. Holmes. He was getting a boner. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Yeah. But the crazy went, thing is, is H.H. H. Holmes was more motivated by money because most of the people he that was, he killed, yeah, he, was he was able to, yeah. So there's there's a lot of, there's a lot to dig with him and all. That's a whole nother show. This fucking guy. Thomas is like a guru. You picked a good guess. Yeah, we got to do a part two, boys. Either on my show or back with Diego. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go back and forth. That's, that's perfect. That's what the family is all about. Gentlemen, yep. thank you for being on the show. And uh, interesting. I love diving into this topic. And uh We'll fun. definitely do another 
panel just like this. I love you guys, and thank you so much oh, for being on the show. I love you, too. Thank you for offering. What an honor, Thomas. Yeah, you guys are the best. So I love talking to you. It was just another Saturday night just hanging out. <laughs> I can go to and get some beer now. I haven't had a chance yet. I took a nap and overslept, so I'm going to go get some yeah. beer and a, probably a pizza. There you go. <laughs> awesome, my friends. This has been another excellent episode of Let's Find Out with Diego. Please check us out on all our social media pages, YouTube, and we're also on Rumble. Like, share, and subscribe. Also, Let's Find Out is now on KGRA Digital Broadcasting. Catch the shows on Saturdays at 2 a.m. For more information, please visit KGRADB.com. That's KGRADB.com. Thank you for taking this journey with me. Until next time, my friends. All content for Let's Find Out is property of co-host Diego and is served directly from our servers with no modification, redirects, or re-hosting. All celebrity impersonators are paid performers. The impersonated celebrities do not endorse or promote any views or opinions expressed by our guests, co-host Diego, or Let's Find Out. The information shared on Let's Find Out is provided on an as-is basis with no guarantees of completeness, accuracy, usefulness, or timeliness.